my forehead shine. Why? Your good man. You get these bloopers? <laughs> <laughs> Take four. Hey guys, I'm Donnelly Cruz and I'm a digital nomad based in Jamaica. Okay, so I actually didn't spend my whole life in Jamaica. I was here until I was seven years old. I'm from a small little town named Kingsley Manchester in Manchester. Um, so after the age of seven, I migrated to the States where I lived for a while and moved back to Jamaica in my 20s. So what brought you back here? Wow. So I came back here, it's a bit of a long story. But in general, um, I wanted to be in the place that made me happiest. So I took a break from my American life at 23 and moved down here to set up a new life or to start fresh and, and just be in the place that fills me up the most, which is Jamaica. So digital nomad, um, that's another way of saying a remote worker. So basically, I can work online and I'm nomadic, so I'm not tied to a building or a company. Um, a lot of actually digital nomads own their own companies or they are just freelancers that are on the go. It's just a fancy way of saying, like, I don't have to clock in. <laughs> I decided to travel first. But the um, original plan was to save up for a year and then go on my journey and live off of savings. But I was like, I don't want to do that. I'm just going to go take a leap of faith and start traveling. And I decided, okay, if I'm going to start traveling, I need to earn an income. So it's kind of like travel first, then I'm like, okay, I need to pay for this. So three weeks within my travel, I got my first digital nomad, my freelance contract. And then it's been two plus years that I've been a digital nomad, working online, having all my clients that I work with remotely. So I, my first location was Nicaragua, where I actually got to co-live, which is another good option if you want to be a digital nomad and go work on the road. There's places that you can go, like co-working spaces that are specific for digital nomads, but there's also co-living. So it's like a hostel setup or shared living setup that you get to live with people who are also working. So they understand that there are work hours, but you know, it's also a fun travel lifestyle. So you get to meet a lot of people that way. Some of my travel buddies are people I met in um, my co-living location in Nicaragua. So I've been to Nicaragua, Costa Rica, went to Trinidad twice, um, Portugal, Belgium, London, Malaysia, Singapore, and Bali. If you want to be a digital nomad, I think my only advice can be what skills you already have that can translate online, like to make you money. Not everybody's a blogger and not everybody wants to be a blogger. So if you're good at organizing, then can you be a, a digital assistant for someone? Can you help automate their system and get calls around the world and be an assistant but online? Um, are you a marketer? You can help multiple com companies online. You don't have to be in a physical space. Um, did you always want to start your own company and maybe you can go away and live off your savings and build a business plan? You know, that's still being a digital nomad. Also, people I feel like in the creative fields, we have uh, a good advantage when it comes to being a digital nomad. Because you could be a photographer anywhere. You could do videography anywhere. Um, you can get your services around the world for, I don't know, discounted space or monetary value. You can put clients around the world. So it's, it's, the mindset is literally like, what can I do to make me income online? And that's kind of limitless in the day and age we live in. Bali is a very special place to me. Um, I was actually going to use Bali as a base 
to travel the rest of Asia, so some place I can always go back to and then leave again. But then I went to Bali and kind of never really left. Not for long trips at least. Bali it was super like restorative and relaxing for me. So I ended up staying there for seven months. I ended up taking Bahasa classes, learning the language. I have a whole tribe of friends there now and people I consider family. So Bali is like one of those spaces where you go if you need a break. If you need a complete moment to breathe from life and get some really good cheap massages and eat some really yummy food and meet some amazing people. I think one of the things that make Bali really special um, it's the people. The people are, they have an energy I've never really felt before or seen before. They're so warm, they're so welcoming, and it's like the way they live their life. So you don't feel like, okay, maybe they're just nice to, be, to me because dot, dot, dot. Like, they're actually just really warm, loving people, which I found super refreshing. The thing that I thought was really cool about Bali is all the culture. So Bali is the only Hindu island in all of Indonesia and they have a very special form of Hinduism that they practice there. So at, at any given time of the day, any day of the week, you can witness all kinds of ceremonies and rituals and there's so many traditions like it blows my mind to be surrounded with so much rich culture and so much tradition. I feel like, yes, we have a lot of traditions here in Jamaica, but we don't have um, the same traditions our ancestors have, like the same rituals or anything like that that we can say, like, oh, we've been doing this for hundreds of years. You know, we were kind of robbed of that, but we won't get into that right now. But it's, so it's kind of cool to see a culture that keeps all those traditions alive, that keeps that um, aspect as really important to everybody there. And a lot of the communities in Bali are set up that you feel, um, what's the word? You feel like a very integral part of the community. Like you have jobs that you have to do with the local temple. Like if the ones your turn to be part of the sacred dances, like everybody has a role to play in the community, which I thought was really nice. That's, I think it helps also foster that sense of like love and warmth and people looking out for you because you have duties to perform to make sure that your community is. Um, living its best life, its most sacred life, I guess you could say. Um, what are some of the things that you remember um, doing in Bali? Things that I remember doing. So, I did a lot of sleeping in Bali. <laughs> I, did, I, did, I had a lot of time to rest and I think that was one of the biggest things for me, being in a space that was so comfortable and so easy to relax. And um, I learned how to ride a scooter, so I went on a lot of scooter adventures. And even that was really freeing, to be able to just jump on a bike and go anywhere and feel safe and feel like you don't have to worry, get lost in some rice field and come back and nobody's, nobody knows this is what you're like, you're like, whatever. Um, I love the water temple, I love bathing in the water temple, I went a couple times. And then the last time I actually went to the water temple, I had a full um, cleansing ritual blessing before I went. So I saw the priest and I did the bathing, I got sacred prayer and the rice on the head. It was amazing. Uh, another thing that I remember doing, uh, what else? You got the yoga, you got the massages, but I think the people left the biggest impression. So I got the opportunity to stay at a homestay, which I booked without thinking much of it, but they ended up being like family to me. I stayed with them for two months. They're the ones that taught me how to ride a bike. Um, they're the ones that if anything goes down, I'm like, yo, I need whatever, like, are you okay? You know, they're checking on me even after I left the homestay. And when I moved into my house, because I ended up renting a house with a friend, I asked them to come and bless the home. So we did a traditional blessing. Um, so if anybody is in Bali or one of us, go to Ubud, stay at Ubud's homestay. You know, shameless fun. Those are my people. They take good care of you. And not only do the locals take good care of you, I find that I met a lot of really good people. 
I have really good friends there now, people that we still talk, we still keep in touch. And anywhere in the world I go now, I know like, okay, my body tried this here, or somebody's traveling, let's try to link up. And, and that's also a really good feeling. That's a great really special feeling. If you want to be a digital nomad, I think the best in I won't say only advice because I'm about to give you another tip, but the best thing I could say is pick a date, commit, and book a flight. I feel like a lot of people say, oh, I wish, or when this and when that, you're gonna win, 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 and never, you know, it will never happen. Just commit to a date and say, yo, by this day, I have to get everything in order because I'm leaving. Um, another thing you could do, and you probably should definitely do, is always do your homework. Do your research. There are tons of people living this lifestyle. People that write so many blog posts about like how to make money, how to get to this country, what's safe, what's, you know, where has the best Wi-Fi. You really have no excuse to not have the knowledge that you need to be a digital nomad because other people are already living this lifestyle and sharing these tips. So in, um, what's the word? So throw yourself into the research, like follow the people on Twitter, read all their blog posts, watch all the videos so you don't go in feeling like you don't know what you're doing. Also, when you're trying to move from maybe doing a regular nine to five and going to online work, use the network you already have. Maybe you're really good at numbers and accounting and you have a friend that you can manage their books online while you're away. Or you're good at organizing, like I said before, you could be an assistant for a friend that's looking for somebody, but you do it online. Um, social media, use your immediate network first. You never know who would, um, like, what is it, so into you, who would help you, who would, you know what, I have resources, I have connections, I don't need you right now, but so and so I heard is looking for this kind of person. So it's not, um, impossible it's so possible and it's much easier than you think you just have to take a day do your homework get on a flight get out of here <laughs>